So you've launched your career as a filmmaker and you're hopping on for your first film. Excited, you hop online to check out some of the gear that you're gonna need for the shoot, just to find out that you're gonna have to pull out a loan just to make it work. <laughs> Super bummer. Hey, what's happening everyone? My name is Ryan, and today I wanted to show you five filmmaking hacks that you could use to get cinematic footage without breaking the bank. Let's get into it. So a lot of these techniques and tips and tricks that I'm gonna share with you today are things that I've learned over the years of filmmaking and being on sets, just things that I picked up here and there over the years. And there are quite a few of them that I actually even use today. Now there is a way I present those ideas on set and they work in a creative sense for me. So depending on where you are in the chain of command, I would just be really thoughtful on how you present those ideas, unless it's very well thought out, the script calls for it, and your timing is perfect. However, these are absolutely perfect for when you're working with small crews or you're a solo filmmaker. These are gonna work out really great and look amazing when you're building out your scene. All right, so let's get into the first one. So in my research, I found that you could find a foam board online from 15 to 40 and even 100 bucks for a pack or something like that. However, if you don't have that kind of money to spend on a foam board, here is a great alternative. So I just bought this poster board that I got from the grocery store. You may have seen me use it in a couple of my examples here on the channel. I got this thing for about $1.50, I think, but they can go anywhere up to about $7 if you get some of the tri-fold ones. Really, any one of these would work. And as a matter of fact, you don't really need a foam board at all. You could just bounce your light off of a white wall and that would do the trick. However, a foam board or one of these poster boards is gonna give you a lot more control when you're trying to lift the shadows on your subject. I've used it as a book light in one of my examples, how to light a cinematic documentary interview. If you're interested in seeing how I did that whole setup, then I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, and number two is using cookies. And no, not the kind you eat, the Kukaloris that are often called cookies on set. And these are just little boards with random cutouts in them to give you abstract shadows within your scene. The most common one that you've probably seen are these blinds here. Face the board in front of the light at a good distance. Depending on the distance that you are from the light, it's gonna create a shadow on the background of your subject or on your subject, giving the illusion of window blinds for your scene. Now, I was able to do this just by cutting out a piece of cardboard and making the slits myself, just making sure that they were evenly cut to give off that illusion. But there's also these abstract ones that you could use. Let's say that you're trying to create, you know, maybe a tree branch or something like that. However, I personally don't ever buy any of these things. They could be anywhere up to about $200 if you buy them online. What I like to do is just use the real thing like I did in this example here. I just used a tree branch from an old dead tree that I was breaking down and placed it on a C stand right in front of the light. And that did the trick. That just made it a little bit more realistic as if the sun was going down right behind a tree in the scene. Now, again, if you'd like to see how I lit this scene, then I'll leave a link in the description below. So feel free to watch that video after this video if you'd like. And number three is one of my favorite tricks to use, and that is to shoot at blue hour to create a night scene. I love using this kind of technique. This is a technique that they use in Hollywood, usually to fake a night scene. Now, you definitely can shoot at night when the sun has gone completely down. Down, I do recommend using external lights or practical lights that will motivate some of the lighting that you're gonna use for that type of scene. But going with blue hour can really open up the options for your night scene. Now, one thing to note is that blue hour isn't an hour at all. It's probably about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on where you live and it can happen really fast. So one tip that I would have for you if you're gonna shoot in blue hour is to make sure that you are well prepared in pre-production, you know exactly what you're gonna shoot, you know exactly how you're gonna light it, and this is gonna give you optimal time in the actual shoot. Another tip for you would be to arrive way ahead of time so that you can get everything set up, tested out, and ready to go. Your actors are rehearsed, your crew is ready to go, so that way when you press record, you optimize the time that you have available. All right, so enough about that. Let's get into the fourth thing, and that is creating depth. You probably heard me talk a lot about creating depth for your scene, and there's a reason for that. Most likely, when you're watching a video or you're watching a film, a movie, you're watching it on a flat device, whether it's a flat screen TV or your phone. So it's up to us as the filmmaker to create depth within the scene. Now, one way you could do this is to pull your subject away from the background. If your subject is right up on the background and you film your subject that close to the background, it's gonna create a flat image. If it 
it calls for it within the script and it looks great for the story that you're trying to tell, then definitely break this rule. But more often than not, especially in an interview, you're gonna wanna separate your subject from the background. Now, all you have to do is pull your subject away from the wall as much as possible. But if you're in a small room or a small space and you can't necessarily do that, one way to create some depth in a smaller space is to shoot at the corner and this is going to give you a lot more depth in your scene and also to directing the viewers eyes to the subject making them that more prominent and especially when it comes to introducing a main character or having a main character in a scene or even in an interview this is really going to help the viewer to concentrate on the important information that's coming from your main character and number five is to use practical lights now practical lights are a great way to add a lot more interest in your scene and they're a great way to motivate some of the lighting that you'd like to place on your subject so let's take this for example if i have this really warm weird light off to the side of his face and it feels kind of weird or off well it should because there's nothing motivating that lighting you're just seeing a light off to the side and there's nothing for your brain to connect that to but if i were to widen this shot and show that there is a lamp right next to our subject that's motivating the warm light that's on the side of our subject's face then all of a sudden it makes sense. So it really just allows you to have more flexibility within the scene, especially if you're shooting an interview. It's really nice to have something that's familiar within the scene to make the subject a little bit more relatable. And one way to do that is with practical lights. I personally love the challenge of trying to find a creative solution to an issue that I'm having on set and just using what I have available to me and the knowledge that I have available to me to make it work. I don't know if I'll ever stop doing that. There are so many tips and tricks and techniques that so many filmmakers at all different skill levels use to bring their films to life. So whatever gear you have available to you, and as always on this channel, I just wanna encourage you to go out and make your film. Well, that's gonna do it for me, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this quick video. If you like this video or you learned something, please click the like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.